All right, the Baltic Dry Index, it measures commodity shipping costs. Recently, it hit a one-year high, up more than 60% from its February low, driven perhaps by a spike in global demand for coal and, of course, China's appetite for iron ore to make steel. So what does all of this mean for investors? Well, my next guest covers the shipping industry for Cantor Fitzgerald, and she joins us now with her outlook on the industry. Natasha Boyden, good to have you with us, and congratulations, newly named head director of research at Cantor Fitzgerald. Yes. Well done. Thank you very much. Tell us about the health right now of shipping rates. Let's let's sort of break it down. Cape size, right? Let's start to talk Stay about with Cape size. Cape size. Is, All right. Yeah, These are the ones that go around the Cape in South Africa. Exactly, and they they primarily haul iron ore and coal. Now they've been pretty low for the majority of the year, but recently we've seen uh, a multi-year spike in the rates, um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. The first one is coal into Japan has, has risen pretty dramatically because the nuclear ref refineries uh, are a main. Uh, you mentioned China and iron ore imports into China are at four-year highs um, because their currency is so strong they're importing everything they can. And the other reason is scrapping has actually been a huge factor this year. Scrapping of ships. Of in ships. other words, there are fewer ships of that right. size to yeah. haul the iron ore, to haul right. the coal to Japan. Right. Because rates were so low for most of the year, owners actually realized that it was more cost effective for them to scrap the ships, especially some of the older ones. And we've seen about 4% of the fleet being scrapped, which is obviously very healthy, especially in an industry where you've got a, an oversupply problem. In, in other words, too many ships coming on. All right. So what is this, and from your perspective, is the, what does this mean for the long-term health mm -hmm. of the global economy? And is this likely to stick? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's a little too early to tell. I mean, yes, we've seen a nice spike in rates, but you, you and I you both know how volatile rates can be. They, they can, can change overnight. They can change overnight. They could go down just as fast as they've gone up. And the one thing that does concern me a little bit with this, this spike that we've seen is that the futures rates have not gone up. They're still showing a, a dramatic drop-off into the first quarter. And we've also not seen any period charters. So it tells me that the industry doesn't quite yet believe that this is a real rally. Now, if we have a few more weeks of this, I think we could actually turn around and say, OK, this the scrapping and, and demand all put together is actually overshadowing the supply. But I think it's a little too early to tell. All right. Well, let's use some specific companies mm -hmm. as examples to try to see what's going on in the industry. I know you covered Diana, for yes. example. You've got a buy rating on the mm -hmm. shares right now. Tell me about what's going on at, at Diana. And they don't use much leverage, do they? No, actually, they have one of the healthiest balance sheets in the industry. They've got about 435 million. They will have 435 million in cash on the balance sheet by the end of the year, which is probably the most out of any of our companies. Very low leverage. Um, they basically what they are looking to do is to buy ships at the bottom of the market. What we've seen, obviously, in a bad industry is asset values have been coming down, much like home prices have done the same thing. It's the same thing with ships. Asset values come down. And their strategy is to buy low, wait a little while, wait for rates to come back, and really, you know, get get a real profit on the ships there. Well, indeed, there was a report from Bloomberg News today that the private equity investor Wilbur Ross said the same thing. He said mm -hmm. that he sees there's going to be an Absolutely. opportunity to buy ships. And they put their money where their mouth is because they bought the Cedar fleet. Indeed. So, you know, there's definitely there's definitely interest in the industry. All right, let's talk about one company I know you've been following, Navios Maritime Partners. Yes. Many people focus on this because it does pay a pretty decent it's dividend. It's got a hell of a yield. I mean, it's about 13%. Uh, which Sustainable? is Sustainable? Yes, in our opinion. They've got contracts going out about five years. They're about 100% covered for this year, pretty close to that for next year. Um, they also have insurance on all of those charters from a AAA rated European insurer. So they're pretty well set. Um, and again, they have a fairly healthy balance sheet. They also have access to their parent company, which is Navios Holdings, to get ships and buy ships from them. They have an agreement with them. But the yield is what really is attractive in this name. Yeah, because it is so much higher than treasuries, for example. People <laughs> well, are looking for yield. They're trying to figure out ways exactly. to make and some it's, money. And it's sustainable, as we, as we said. Tell me about safe bulkers, services to the dry bulk industry. Safe bulkers is a, is a nice little name. Again, it's another dry bulk name. They have about a 9% yield. Um, the one thing we like about safe bulkers is they've got a lot of built-in growth. They have about 11 ships that they've already ordered, um, and they've pretty much covered most of the capital outlay for those ships. So their balance sheet is fairly healthy. Um, it's not a well-known name. It's one we like to get out there and have people talk about. Um, but again, it's, it's more of a yield play. And, and they have long-term contracts, too, so that's going to be helpful. How important is it for companies to have those long-term charters? Because there's always that kind of segmentation in the market. You've got yeah. companies that are 
positioned and designed to take advantage of short-term mm -hmm. increases mm -hmm. and those that really have that it covered for exactly long term. I mean it's a trade-off. I mean if you want to take the risk and some companies do they believe that they're going to get more um, more bang for their buck out of the spot market and historically that has proven true. It just happens to be the last three years it hasn't and if you were it would, if you if you were a company with long-term charters you would have fared much better. Um, you know, I think again, it's a trade-off. It depends on what each investor is, your appetite for risk, and what you're looking for. But at the moment, we would continue to advise investors to continue looking for long-term contracts. The market's still too volatile to tell, and you want to be in a safe place. I want to thank you very much, Natasha Boyden, joining us from Cantor Fitzgerald on the shipping industry and director of research. Thank you very much.